Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, beloveds. Oh, I see some other uh, faces. You snuck in. Welcome. Welcome home. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue, uh, and I'm the spiritual director and senior minister here. So here we are, uh, wrapping up the November Seed of Awakening for the month, which has been home. And the title uh, for today's talk is welcome home and so um, I love seeing new faces and familiar faces and uh, whether you have attended recently or maybe you attended years ago and you decided to come back today or whatever the case may be welcome home welcome home this is your spiritual home and we will be here for you and isn't that great to know? Uh, this is my spiritual home, too. And I was away last Sunday, and I missed you guys. But DeLon did awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I missed you guys, and we had the loved table celebration with lots of food and all kinds of goodness. So it's definitely good to be home. And as I was driving here this morning, I was thinking about that just that how I'm going to my spiritual home and going to also be met with love and feel that love of spirit now the reason that is is well because of all of you here but also because I am always at home in the heart of God and wherever I find myself I allow myself to be at home and so that sense of being at home is generated from within us, isn't it? And we also, uh, as we mingle and mix with people and we fellowship, we also get to feel that sense of safety, like we can totally be ourselves and it's going to be all right. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. And so in spiritual community, that means, yeah, you can totally uh, have your negative experience. <laughs> and uh, and you, we love you exactly as you are because we know that you can't stay that way. Our nature is to evolve. And so whoever might be having a difficult experience right now, we love you exactly as you are and we accept you exactly as you are. And we'll be here to know the truth for you and to continue to speak and affirm the truth for you until you can know it for yourself. Doesn't that feel good to know that there's this community of people that are uh, holding you and lifting you up into the light? Yeah, it feels awesome. And so today is really going to be like a Thanksgiving feast. I've got a, an entree and I've got a couple of random side dishes <laughs> that needed to be here for some reason. Maybe they don't totally fit in, but I'll figure out how to fit them in. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so home, right? So here we are. We end the journey at home which is where we began. Now, at the beginning of the month, I talked about the hero's journey, and there's a point in our lives where we set out on an adventure, and, and we experience the hero's journey, and we do this actually many times, right? There could be uh, a vacation that is our hero's journey. There could be, you know, we decide we're gonna go back to school, and that's a hero's journey of its own, or we're gonna learn to surf, or whatever the case may be, right? We have many hero's journeys, but there's one journey that is our life, and we are the hero of our own journey. And so we start out at home, uh, which is kind of in the womb of our mother, and we're birthed into existence, and now we're these spiritual beings having a human experience, and so this human experience is that hero's journey. 
And so we come into this experience whole, perfect, and complete, one with the creator that brought us into being. And then we encounter things along our human experience. Lots of joyful goodness, and then there's some trials and tribulations, some sorrow as part of this human experience. And we can get lost at times and forget who we are, forget where we came from, forget the truth of who we are. Has that ever happened to anyone here? Right? Yeah. Maybe this morning, right? (laughs) We get lost, but the truth never changes. That truth never changes. And so uh, we we, um, meet friends along the way and, and allies. And these are individuals who... Uh, assist us in um, in our journey along our path and allow us to feel that courage uh, to confront the dark cave of our fears and and then we are transformed right there's usually a mentor involved that we connect with and ultimately though we remember the truth of who we are and where we came from and when we recognize that truth then we discover that we can be at home wherever we are. And so that is a beautiful thing. So we have embodied oneness to such a degree that others feel at home in our presence, which is so beautiful. And so then as others feel at home in our presence, we empower others to remember what it is to be at home and to also be the heroes of their own journeys. So I love what Ernest Holmes said in Can We Talk to God? Excuse me, I'm going to have some water real quick. (laughs) Always the spirit corresponds to our belief in and receptivity to it. Hence there is a power within to which each may come, a presence which is light, a spirit which is guidance. This is fundamental to the understanding of the science of mind. There is a spirit which knows. This spirit is God. This spirit which knows, knows us. It corresponds. It responds. It flows through us. So beautiful. And so uh, here is your first side dish, okay? Actually, it's kind of an entree, but there's a great story about a young girl who was watching her mother bake a ham for a family gathering and noticed that her mom was cutting off the ends of the ham before placing it into the oven. And so she asked, Mom, why do you cut the ends off before baking the ham? And she said, hmm, well, I think it helps soak up the juices while it's baking. I'm not really sure, though. That's just the way your grandma always did it, so I've always done it that way, too. Why don't you call grandma and ask her? So the little girl calls up grandma and says, Grandma, mom is making a ham and cut off the ends before placing it in the oven. She said that it was probably to help soak up the juices, but she wasn't sure. She said you would know because she learned how to cook from you. That's true, she said. I do cut off the ends of the ham before baking, but I'm not sure why either. (laughs) I learned how to cook from my mom. Maybe you should ask her. So the inquisitive little girl called her great-grandmother and said, Great-grandma, mom and grandma said they learned how to cook a ham from watching you. Do you cut off the ends of the ham to help it soak up the juices? The great-grandmother chuckled, Oh, no, sweetie. I just never had a pan big enough to hold a whole ham. So I always cut off the ends to make it fit. (laughs) So this story of the ham is not a new one. It's been told so many different ways, but it's a great example of the critical thinking errors that we can make in our lives, right? So we do things because that's how we were taught. And we don't even question them. We just do it. And so we never even ask the simple question like, why is it done that way? Or what what if, is there another way to do this? 
such a great reminder how we can get onto autopilot based on beliefs from the past, beliefs that we have inherited along the way on our journey or created as a form of protection on this hero's journey. So the question I have for you, what is the ham in your life? <laughs> what is that ham that you are uh, cutting the ends off to fit into the pan instead of getting another pan, getting a bigger pan? There's something, right? And so when we think about getting a bigger pen, this, I love this, it's so Ernest Holmes. He's talking about a mental equivalent, right? If he were telling this story, get a bigger pan. Don't cut off the ends. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit your dreams, what you would love to experience for yourself in your life. Don't cut that off on either side and make it small. It doesn't serve you to play small, my friends. No one is served by your playing small. And so what if there's another way? What if there's a bigger pan out there? What if it's possible that my dream can be realized? Well, guess what it is? It's absolutely possible. And it will be done according to your belief. So calling that ham a dream you have for yourself something big that you've been cutting off the ends to fit your life into when in reality you can have that whole delicious ham. <laughs> If only you had a bigger pen. So get that mental equivalent of the whole delicious ham. Oh, I'm going to answer it. It's Jimmy. <laughs> All right, so I love that story so much. It's just so classic and totally classic Ernest Holmes. Now, uh, coming back to the main dish, which is about returning home, right? So that final leg of the hero's journey is returning home. A person who returns home from the journey is different than the person who left. Regardless of what happened, right? Or what didn't happen. The person is still different. And so they come home, and they come home into this changeless, beautiful space, which is that changeless reality, the changeless truth of uh, this life. And so the hero is one who summoned the courage to set out on the journey to begin with and transcended false limitations, transcended cutting off the ends of the ham in order return to return to the essence of being. Now, remembering that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, we realize that this journey isn't about becoming someone else. It's about being the best possible version of ourselves that we can be, psychologically and spiritually mature adults. Yes? You with me? Well, what the heck does it mean to be um, psychologically and spiritually mature? So, uh, bless you. <clears throat> so, just like the hero, mature adults have the courage and willingness to go into those dark caves of their fears, facing challenges head on, not hiding out, not ignoring or denying uncomfortable circumstances or anything like that. Now, some mistakenly think that in the Science of Mind teaching, Ernest Holmes was saying to deny circumstances. But to be clear, he didn't say we were to deny the circumstances. Yes, you might be having an experience in your life, but don't give your power to that experience, which is what we do when we start talking to people about it. We start complaining. Uh, we, you know take out a newspaper ad, whatever, right? <laughs> You're announcing it and broadcasting it, giving it power. This experience happened, but what is the truth of your being, right? What is the truth of you? That's what we're called to focus on as spiritual beings. And so this is what happens, right, as a natural occurrence of us discovering who we truly are, the spiritual presence of love that lives within us. Secondly, mature, spiritually mature adults are not victims. 
blaming and shaming, making excuses, demanding accountability from others, or waiting for difficulties to magically disappear on their own. How many have experienced that? Like waiting for the big hand of God to come in and fix it. <laughs> Going to be waiting a while, right? Going to be waiting a little while. So mature adults are willing to hold themselves accountable. Uh, and so it is also said that this teaching is not for sissies. We realize that we are responsible for creating our own experience, and we are responsible for what we give our power to. And so realizing and recognizing that what we give our power to is what we are creating in our lives, we begin to give our power over to spirit and the truth, which is love, prosperity, wholeness, bliss, all the good, the kingdom of heaven within, yes? Right yes. here, right now. And we begin to focus on that. We hold ourselves accountable to the circumstances in our lives and we don't give those circumstances power. We acknowledge what is and own our part in it and then take action to transform the experience. Spiritually mature adults assume full responsibility for their own thoughts feelings, and action, understanding that accountability is the key to our personal freedom. So third, they release what does not serve them. Wow, that's a big one. We clear out our hearts, we clear our minds, and our physical environments as needed. If you want to, to jumpstart this experience of cleansing and releasing what no longer serves you. Open up one of your drawers and clean it out. <laughs> right? Open up that closet and take out those clothes that you haven't worn in two years that you've been holding on to and pass them on to someone else, right? That always jump starts uh, my experience of checking my thoughts, taking that inventory of what false belief might be holding me back, that uh, if I didn't have that, I would be free to become more of who I came here to be. Because all of us want that, right? Raise your hand if you want to be all that you came here to be. <laughs> right? Thank you. Zoomers, raise your hands too. <laughs> exactly. So we understand as spiritually mature adults that... Uh, Peace of mind is more valuable than being right, you know? Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? You realize there's more power for you in being happy. Being right doesn't matter, right? <laughs> okay, so lastly, the spiritually and psychologically mature adults understand that they are a part of a greater whole, that there is something greater happening than what's in your own head <laughs> or what's in your own life, right? And then we come to spiritual community like this to be part of that something bigger. We know that there's something greater going on and we want to participate in that. We have a gift that we bring. And that gift is, you know, as uh, beautiful and simple as our presence. Uh, we shine. We walk into the room and, and that love that we carry with us is felt and experienced and resonates with one another. And it brings out more of that love. How beautiful is that? So the culmination of this spiritual journey is transcendence, right? We transcend. Now, Abraham Maslow referred to it as the very highest and most inclusive or holistic level of human consciousness, behaving and relating as ends rather than means to oneself, to significant others, to human beings in general, and to other species to nature, and to the cosmos. <clears throat> so imagine you're out on your hero's journey, right? And then you return home. You return home with insight. You return home with wisdom. You return home with power that you have gleaned from the journey that is meant to be shared. 
whatever you have gone through, whatever trials and tribulations that you have experienced and overcome, that is a gift for you to share with others. It's so beautiful. The mature adult recognizes life is a gift and lives purposefully with a commitment to serve a greater good. He or she or they lives with an awareness of this interconnectedness of life and love as the source and substance of that connection. So all of the qualities of the mythic home lie right here within us and within the heart of every human being. Heroes recognize and own their birthright. So as the hero of your own journey, it is your birthright to experience the life that you love. It is your birthright to be all that you came here to be. It is your birthright to have unlimited thinking and be connected to infinite possibility and potentiality and to open up and experience laughter, love, boundless joy. Who likes to laugh in here? <laughs> right? Me too. I love joy. I love to <laughs> Yes, let's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Laughter is so good for our soul. Okay, so now here comes another side dish, right? All right, so as you know, I had foot surgery, or some of you don't know me yet, and you're getting to know me today. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I had a foot surgery, and it was an elective surgery. Everything's great. But after the surgery, I was at home and laying on the couch for a long time, right? And so I had all this time to watch movies. I caught up on a bunch of movies. And a new movie actually came out that I really enjoyed because it was so science of mind. And I've been wondering where I can fit this in, and this is the day. <laughs> Today is the wonderful day. So this is a spoiler alert, <laughs> by the way. Uh, has anybody seen this one yet? Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. One. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is anybody planning to see it? Oh, well, you're going to all want to see it today. So, so this is, I'm sorry, it may be a spoiler. Spoiler alert, so you might have to just close your ears. But anyway, this is the third film adaptation, which is based on a 1958 novel called Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris by the American writer Paul Gallico. And the film is set in the 1950s and follows the life of a woman named Mrs. Ada Harris. And she is a cleaning lady who is recently widowed. So she's grieving and she's trying to live her life as a cleaning lady, uncertain about her future or what she wants to do with her life now that her husband has passed. And so she's going about her days and doing her cleaning, and she's cleaning up one of her clients' homes, and, uh, and that client recently returned from a trip, and she left out this dress that she had purchased in Paris. And it was sitting there, and, and Mrs. Harris walks into the room and sees this dress, and she is head over heels in love with this dress. And there's like light coming down and sparkles, oh, right? She sees this dress and, and she just, something in her just opens up, right? And she realizes she needs a dress like this. And so this is her dream. She falls absolutely in love with this dress. It's a Christian Dior couture dress. It's a gown, actually. And so her client arrives home, and Mrs. Harris is having a moment with the gown, you know. And then she quickly, uh, she quickly gets up and, and puts it back into the closet and, and hangs it up. And... But in that moment, she decided she had to have a dress like this of her own. And so she works and works and uh, and raises money to pursue this dream of hers, but she still falls short. And so uh, something else comes up 
You know, have you ever had a dream and you think it can't be done and then the universe opens up and some miracle occurs that allowed like like the mana drops from heaven and it's right there and you're like, hello, this is it, right? I can use this. And it's so powerful and such a wonderful moment. So she finds a way. Uh, she's, the universe opens up and she... Uh, she gets to uh, get over to Paris because there's a lot of money involved in actually traveling to Paris, not, not to mention getting the actual gown. So she makes her way there. And so the movie, I'll try not to spoil it too much for you guys, but the movie goes through her hero's journey, right? And she's triumphant in the end, returns home. She experiences a lot of things out there and comes back home and and realizes that she doesn't really she has a dress right a beautiful gown but she doesn't have anywhere to wear it and so here she is cleaning again and doing her thing and one of her clients is going to some party and her dress isn't ready and so she decides to loan her client this beautiful gown right and so then her client ruins the dress oh boo right <laughs> But this woman has made friends at the Christian Dior factory in Paris, and they read about it and sent her an even better dress. Aww, right? You guys have to watch this movie. Now, why is this Ernest Holmes, right? That, that's corny, you know? Well, Ernest Holmes was a little corny, too. But he was awesome, right? Because it's all about opening yourself up, allowing yourself to have a desire. You know, in Buddhism, uh, there is that talk about how desire is, you know, the root of all evil or whatever, but it's your uh, giving power to your desire, right? If you allow, you want to experience something for yourself in your life, it's okay. We just finished this mental equivalence class, and, and some people actually feel like, is it okay for me to want this? Yes, it's okay. And when you desire some experience in your life and then you have the experience, guess what? There's another one right around the corner. This is your life. And, and the ideas and these seeds that are being dropped into your consciousness are God seeds, right? Spirit saying, let's, let's learn to surf, right? <laughs> let's learn to paint, Let's learn to be a photographer. Well, I really love to have that certain camera. How is that going to happen, right? The universe will make a way. And so that is another beautiful and powerful example of a mental equivalent. Mrs. Harris had her heart set on this beautiful dress and went after her dream. Now, her dream was a dress. What is yours? What is your dream? Right now. Do you have one? Be open, you know. You can have and be and do anything you want for yourself in your life. Begin to imagine what that is. What's possible. So I'm going to invite... Uh, Jimmy and the musicians to come up and prepare for the closing song as we wrap it up here. So we had our side dish of Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, and we had our entree of the ham, and now we'll have our dessert, which is going to be our prayer. But wrapping it up, my friends, home is here now. The home we long for is the place where we can be our full, true authentic selves. It's a place of unconditional love and acceptance where forgiveness is unnecessary, right? There's a place called home and this home is a place where forgiveness is unnecessary because there is no harm, there is no blame, there is no shame. It's comfortable and familiar. This is a place of sanctuary where we can rest, rejuvenate, and recreate. So as we long for that place where we feel a sense of belonging, 
where we feel that holy, holy sense of home, it's where we are at always. So this home that we long for already exists. It's not outside of us. No one else can create it for us. We're at home wherever we are when we remember the spiritual truth of who we are. Let's take a deep breath together. Ah, yes. And so uh, before we go into prayer, I just have a couple of things for us to contemplate this week, which is, What does spiritual maturity mean for me? And how am I using my gifts and passions to serve the greater good? Now let's turn our attention inward. <clears throat> and join me in returning to this space, which is home. And in this space, I know there is a, an expansion and something is always working for my highest and best good. And as I place my conscious, focused attention on this presence of love that lives within me, I remember that there is only one thing happening here, and it is spirit. It is God, or whatever you choose to call it. The force, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, spirit, the truth, the universe right here, right now within us. And so I remember now that if that's the truth, if that presence is right within me, this is the same presence that created the entire cosmos. It's the same presence that causes the planets to spin around with the sun and it causes our galaxy to move through the multiverse with other universes. Wow. This presence, the same presence that created that is right within me. So this divine intelligence lives within me. And as I remember this truth, I know that I have the power to create because spirit is within me right now. And this is home. This is where I am at home. I am at home in the heart of God. Everything is working for my highest and best good. And my divine gifts uh, are here and available and ready to share. And I share these gifts with everyone. Whatever they may be, I share my light. I share my love. I share my laughter and my joy with everyone I come in contact with. And I am grateful. I am grateful for this day. I'm grateful for this life because this is my one precious life that I get to live. I am ready to shine. And so I know that this is true for each one of us. And that as we leave here, we go out into the world and we are happy. Happy for no reason. Because we are blessed and we know it. I'm grateful and I know it. We remember that, yes, my God is so good to me. And so as we dance our way through our week, we feel this love. And we share it with everyone. And we are so grateful. Thank you, Spirit, for all of these gifts and so much more. For all of the blessings that I see in my life, that we see in our lives today. And I am grateful for the invisible blessings that are on their way. Those things that we don't even know about, they're on their way. And I am grateful. And I release this prayer now knowing it is so. And I invite you to help anchor this by saying with me, and so it is. Woo! Woo! <laughs> right.